Seven and a half hours in the new Qatar Airways business suite for less than £87. I know what you're thinking, it's an Avios rewards booking, and you're right. But you can buy the points you need for less than £430, which makes this fare after the points purchase about £517 one way. And that's compared to the one way cash fare of about £2,500. Oh, by the way, I'm Phil, and I'm on a grey gap year. The new Qatar Airways business class suite on their Boeing 7879 aircraft is not their famous Q suite because the Q suite was too big and too heavy for the 7879. So Qatar's latest business class suite is newer than the Q suite, it's smaller than the Q suite, but is it better than the Q suite? Most passengers tend to transit through Doha but I spent last night in a junior suite in the intercontinental hotel Doha City. And after a long delay through immigration and another long delay checking in at the hotel, I finally got to my room in the small hours of the morning. But I've had some sleep and I've had some coffee and I'm ready to face the world. Checkout was a breeze and the car was ordered. And without fuss, I was on my way to the airport. And after a short drive through some of the amazing architecture, we pulled up at the airport and I was greeted by the Falcon by Tom Clarson, which is an abstract sculpture of the Qatari national bird. An airport porter wheeled my bags into the exclusive premium check-in area. I was directed left to the business class area where the real VIPs go right into first. And this business class check-in is a step up from the usual business class experience and it's a step up from the first wing at Heathrow. It has the same exclusive feel as the first wing, but with a bit more class. The architecture and design uh, is just on another level. An extremely smooth check-in and I was on my way to the business class security lanes and in no time I was making my way down the escalator and into departures. A Harrods store at the bottom of the business class escalator? What a coinky dink Okay. Off the V-gates down that way. I soon got myself orientated and I was on my way to the Orchard and the Al Morjan Business Lounge, The Garden, via the little drain that probably saves 10 or 15 minutes of travelator walking. And I enjoyed a short stroll around the Orchard and I eventually found my way into the new Al Morjan Lounge that's adjacent to it. A viewer suggested it should be called The Secret Garden after I reviewed this lounge uh, quite recently. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. If you watch that other video, you'll see what that's all about. But this new lounge is a great space with natural light spilling in and fabulous views of the orchard. It offers fine dining, showers and more staff than customers. And when I was there, there was possibly more bars than there were customers. With peace and tranquility being the key feature I want from a lounge, my personal view is that this is well worth the trip to the northern end of the airport if you have time. After about three and a half hours of being pampered in the lounge, it was time to board. And I do like it when business class gets their own little bridge. It's very elitist, I know, but still, I love it. One thing I've found with Qatar Airways, if they say they're boarding, then they are. None of Matt's Planet's hashtag boarding not boarding today. And what a great welcome that was. First tick for the cabin crew. First impression of the cabin is it's excellent. Where I've found the excess of burgundy a bit too much in the past, for some reason I really like it in this cabin. The grey trim and the charcoal seat, it bridges the cream and the burgundy. When I first saw the seat, my head was full of all the comparisons that others have made between this seat and the British Airways club suite. And I wondered if that was what I thought or is that what others have told me to think? Because on first glance, they do look very similar. But here is that club suite. And you can see why the comparison is drawn. At the rear of the business cabin, there's this little leg stretch area with a bar and it's filled with fruit and snacks during the flight. Now, it's nothing like the Emirates bar and the A380, of course, but it's nice just to have this little communal area with a few complimentary nibbles. At my seat, I had a blanket, pillow and cushion, which I threw straight into the overhead bin. To the left of the seat is somewhere to put your drinks and other bits and bobs during the flight. And this is also where the universal plug socket, USB charging point and headphone socket all live uh, with the little handheld remote. 
And above this is the only bit of storage I found in the seat, which uh, has a vanity mirror and it also held the headphones and a bottle of water. And next to this is something that all business seats should have, a wireless phone charging pocket. That's actually the perfect size for your passport and boarding card. Why would I charge my phone in a pocket that's behind me where I can't see it? Also in this unit is a large bright lamp and a small reading lamp, which, well, it was actually a bit useless. The adjustable armrest is a lot easier to use than I make it look. Once you know where the latch is, you're golden. And a small tray table, but it's big enough to serve the main meal on, so that's probably good enough. And it does slide back a long way, so you can adjust it uh, as you please. And you can just slide it all the way back to the telly and use it as an extra space for drinks and bits and bobs. And of course, this is a sweet product. So there's doors and the doors were locked open for takeoff. But here I am demonstrating the door a bit later on during the flight. And the door isn't as tall as the Q suite, but it's taller than the club suite. And it had a decent feeling of privacy. I couldn't see the rest of the cabin when I was seated. First impressions and all that, I like this seat. And while I was having a nosy about my seat, my meal order was taken. And I also ordered a pre-departure beverage of a lemon mint, which was delivered with a refreshing towel in a packet. No boiled rags here. Cheers. And with an obligatory wipe of the face, it was time to fasten your seatbelts. And I got a great view of the jet bridge as it was backing away. And little nerdy me really loved watching the jet bridge retreating from the plane. And as we taxied, I recorded a bit more of the Qatar Airways safety video as I'd driven past the National Museum of Qatar earlier that day. It's an interesting piece of architecture that I hope to visit again in the future. It was a rather hazy day, which really surprised me, essentially, you know, out in the desert, but it made for a beautiful takeoff. And with the cluster of tall buildings in the distance and the sun setting over the hazy sky, I thought it had a kind of a Turner-esque feel to it. I took advantage of Qatar's dine on demand and asked for my meal to be delayed for a couple of hours, but I enjoyed a bourbon and coke with a few nuts. And I was at the back of business, so I would have been one of the last to be served anyway, and I just settled in for some TV on Qatar's excellent selection. Qatar's Oryx headphones are good quality noise cancelling headphones. I never need to get my own headphones out in Qatar business class. And I've heard that Emirates has the most entertainment in its in-flight entertainment system, but Qatar's offering is still very good. I'd been binging their Paramount content on the other flights, and they've got a lot of full season box sets, which is a big improvement over British Airways and others that often give you the first three episodes, but then leave you wanting more. I'd started Tulsa King season one on another flight and I hope to finish that or at least get within the range of a 14 day free trial. All the episodes for Tulsa King were there. And TV box sets are my thing, but if you prefer movies, there've been plenty of choices on previous flights I've taken with them. Honestly, I think you could fly 20 hours and just not run out of content. And the screen itself felt bright and new and crystal clear and most importantly, responsive. It also had a working handheld remote with a screen that you could put the maps on while you're watching TV if you so chose. About halfway through the seven and a half hour flight, I decided to have my meal. And since I'd picked two fish courses, which is unusual for me, I decided on a white wine and what better white wine than a glass of champagne. The table was laid, no flickering candle today, and an amuse-bouche was delivered. And I love Qatar's mystery amuse-bouche. This was a cube of pan-seared tuna with a cherry tomato. So actually three fish courses today. While I waited for my starter to be served, it looked like I managed to munch my way through one of the three little loaves. It was another deviation from the other flights I've been on. There was no basket for the bread. But that salmon starter just looks outstanding and it's cold smoked salmon with saffron labne served with samphire, which I'd never tried before, but it's sort of a sea salt taste. And the garnish in the center of the pieces of salmon are small amounts of caviar. What a great range and combination of flavors and textures that was. An absolute superb starter. For my main course, I selected fried turbot with lemon butter sauce and dauphinoise potatoes. And the video I've got of this doesn't really do it justice, but fortunately I took a photo. Now I think the presentation is nice enough, although it looks all a bit beige, but the flavors, they worked really well and they managed to get the butter sauce to work in the air, which is an achievement. 
The staff kept my water and champagne topped up, checking in every so often. And of the three Qatar business flights I've taken, I thought the crew on the 7878 checked in a bit too much. On the Q suite, I thought they checked in a bit too little, but this crew were just right, like baby bear's porridge. And I didn't have a dessert or a cheese plate, which again is unusual for me, especially as I'd enjoyed the light dessert of berries and syrup before. The bog standard. And it was pretty much a bog standard airline toilet, perhaps a little bigger than the usual, but nothing fancy. That splash of water on the sink is probably from me washing my hands, by the way, because the toilets were kept clean during the flight. A couple of bottles of fancy soap and moisturiser and some toothbrushes and razors, but nothing particularly premium. It was really rather bog standard. This flight had the same small diptyque amenity kit that I received on my Q-Suite flight to Bali, so it's in a pouch rather than a cardboard box, but I think whether you have it in a bag or a box, it's an underwhelming kit containing body lotion, lip balm, face cream, eau de toilette and some flight socks. The seat is a fully lie flat seat with simple to use controls and it only requires a single push for it to fully descend into bed mode so you can stand up, push it once and it becomes a bed. And once you put the armrest down you've got a reasonable bed to sleep in. Not as big a bed as the Q-Suite but a reasonable bed nonetheless and I initially put the seat into bed mode with the intention of filming it and then just putting it back up but I instantly felt tired as soon as I lay down and promptly fell asleep. The camera ran until it overheated and shut itself off. Okay, even without the mattress topper or pillow, I think we can say this is a comfortable bed. For the taller viewer though, I wonder if this bed is a little shorter than some of the other lie flat seats. And the foot cubby looks like it might be a bit narrow. So I'm five foot four, so it's a bit hard for me to say in practice. This was a rewards booking and it cost me 43,000 Avios and £86.90 in cash. The Qatar site said there was no availability, but I found this as a BA code share on the British Airways website. And it makes a mockery of BA's own reward flights to Doha from London, which start at 80,000 Avios and £122. And this is for a club suite, but Qatar fly their Q suite on some of their flights on this route. And there is lots of availability on this and other fares across the calendar and across the world with Qatar. And the amazing thing is you don't even need to laboriously collect Avios to book these flights. You can just buy them because both BA and Qatar sell Avios directly and have periodic sales with up to 50% bonus Avios that would make an Avios through Qatar cost 1.167p per point. But with some planning, you can buy the points you need through a BA subscription. And if you're buying 200,000 points, then you can get them for under 1p per point. But if you bought 100,000 points you needed for this trip, then they would cost just a smidge over that 1p threshold. But even buying 100,000 points would mean that your round trip to Doha with Qatar in business would cost less than £1,219 over a cash fare of over £3,500 or about $4,500. Now, I've got some tutorials coming up in a few weeks on how to find and book these cut price rewards fares because BA and Avios, well, they're just the start. After I'd napped for a couple of hours, we were getting close to Manchester and there was only really time to sort out my bits and bobs and get ready to land and squeeze in just a little bit more of Tulsa King. I didn't have the time or the appetite for any more food, but I do wish I'd tried the black truffle croque monsieur. I know it's basically going to be a grilled cheese with some truffle oil on it, but it's different and it's intriguing and it's these little improvements that sets Qatar apart from their competitors. But the seat I got on this occasion was great and I loved it. Not a lot of storage, but I was able to keep my smaller bag with me throughout the entire flight. Uh, not a very big foot cubby, but I'm five foot four or 162 centimeters, so no issue for me. This seat is very comfortable to sit in and sleep in though with plenty of room and I'm saying that as a plus size gentleman and I'd fly this seat again without complaint. But is it better than the Q suite? I don't think it is better than the Q-Suite. It is an excellent seat, but not better than the Q-Suite. 
If you'd like to see how this experience compares with my Q-Suite flight, then this should be the next video you watch. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, perhaps you'd consider giving me a like. And if you subscribe to the channel and click the bell, you'll get notifications for future upcoming videos. And as always, your support is very much appreciated. So thank you for watching and joining me on my grey gap year.